Perched on an outcrop of rock overlooking Buckfast Abbey is the shell of what was Holy Trinity Church. Visit here on a sunny day and you will find it one of the most serene and peaceful places. All you will probably have for company are the jackdaws who nest in the walls of the church. Visit here after dark and you have another scenario. This is a church like Brantor that when being built saw the intervention of the devil who tried in vain to stop the villagers constructing a place of holy worship. In the case of this church, Satan was fooled by the building of a steep flight of 196 steps. As you walk up the main pathway, you will find a huge building that defies description. Known locally as the Sepulchre, this penthouse tomb would probably be more suited to coldits. If it reminds you of a prison, then you are not far wrong, because in it are the incarcerated remains of the Cable family, and in particular, Squire Richard Cable. If you peer through the heavy metal bars, you will see a tomb with a gigantic white slab on top of it. The building and the heavy slab will give you a hint that we are not dealing with a normal family burial plot. It will strongly suggest that somebody is trying to contain something, and there we have the legend. Squire Richard Cable lived during the 1600s and was the local squire of Buckfast Lee. He had a passion for hunting and was what in those days described as a monstrously evil man. He gained his reputation for amongst other things immorality and having sold his soul to the devil. There was also a rumour that he had murdered his wife. On the 5th of July 1677 he passed away and was laid to rest in the sepulchre. But that was only the beginning of the story. The night of his interment saw a phantom pack of hounds come baying across the moor to howl at his tomb. From that night onwards, he could be found leading the phantom pack across the moor, usually on the anniversary of his death. If the pack was not out hunting, they could be found ranging around his grave, howling and shrieking. In an attempt to lay the soul to rest, the villagers built a large building around the tomb and to be doubly sure, a huge slab was placed on top of the grave to stop the ghost of the squire escaping. Even after taking these measures, people have reported a strange red glow emanating through the iron bars. Other folk have reported seeing a whole host of demonic creatures gathered around the grave trying to get to their promised soul for their master. Below the church are a system of caves which run for about 3.5 kilometres. In Reed's cave is a weird natural formation known as the Little Man. This has been formed by the joining of a stalactite and stalagmite. The figure is said to resemble a human figure in 17th century clothes. Unnervingly, this formation has been calculated to lie directly below the tomb of Cable and can be seen in the picture below. It is also said that if you run around the penthouse tomb seven times and then stick your hand through the iron bars, either Squire Cable or the devil will bite your fingers. <coughs> Other stories pertaining to Cable are that he rides in a coach, led by headless horses, driven by a headless coachman. This legend is fairly unique for a church, but the stories don't stop there. In the 19th century, the graveyard was apparently a frequent target for body snatchers. Its secluded location and a convenient lane made it an ideal spot. Things don't even stop there. In 1884, the church was restored and the work included renewing the spire which had been truncated by a previous lightning strike. 
On the morning of Tuesday the 8th of May, 1849, at 11am, Mr Henry Tucker of Down Farm Ashburton was riding along the road adjoining the churchyard when he noticed smoke billowing out from the vestry door. Immediately he rode back to town and raised the alarm. The fire engine and wagons loaded with hogheads of water began fighting the blaze. Fortunately, they managed to get the fire just under control as it was reaching the roof. Unfortunately, the vestry was completely gutted. The roof of the north aisle badly damaged along with the floor near the altar. From the evidence at the scene, it soon became obvious that there was a malicious act of arson. Three iron bars were found which had been used to force entry through a window and entered the vestry and broke open the door leading to the chancel. During World War II, some of the stained glass windows were shattered by the blast from German bombs. Just when you think things can't get any worse, we jump forward to the 21st of July 1992, when sometime around midnight, the church was broken into and a fire started under the altar. This time, the inferno completely gutted the church. The biggest problem that the fire brigade faced was that the nearest hydrant was a quarter of a mile away and the fact that they had to pump water uphill. The fire was so intense that the heat literally blew apart the old Norman font. Although never proven, blame for the fire was placed at the feet of Satanists and devil worshippers. For hundreds of years it was thought that black magic rites had been carried out at the church and the squire's tomb in particular. The building which houses the tomb has a solid wooden door at the back. This has been placed there to deter Satanists from gaining entry. How many churches can list such an unfortunate catalogue of events? The building today stands as an empty shell and testament to the possible fact that even today evil is at work. Between 2002 and 2005, a joint research project was carried out on the site by University College London and Dartmoor National Park. Excavations have established that the medieval Trinity Church is built on an earlier structure dating to the late Saxon period and is perhaps at the site of the first Buckfast Abbey, which was already known to be in existence by 1018 AD. The tower, chancel and transepts were constructed in the 13th century, with the aisles and chancel chapels added in the 15th century. By the mid-19th century, the building had fallen into ruinous state and underwent major restoration. After the last fire in 1992, the Grade II listed building stands open to the elements apart from the tower, which has been restored, and houses the church bells. The church remains consecrated and occasionally services are conducted at the church, including weddings and the graveyard is still open for burials. It's believed that Sir Arthur Conan Doyle found inspiration for the Hound of the Baskervilles whilst conversing with his great friend Bertram Fletcher Robinson on a voyage back from South Africa in July 1900. Robinson, editor of the Daily Express at that time, had spent his childhood growing up in Nipplepen, not far from Buckfastley, and regaled Conan Doyle with the dark supernatural tales of Richard Cable and the diabolical fiery hounds. The following spring of 1901, Conan Doyle visited Dartmoor and stayed at the Dutch Hotel at Princeton. It's not known whether he visited Buckfastley in person, but Richard Cable certainly had a large influence in the creation of the evil Sir Hugo Baskerville and thus the entire plot line. There are a number of conspiracy theories out there that purport Robinson had in fact come up with the original script and that Conan Doyle was guilty of plagiarism. Whatever the case may be, 
There is a footnote to the first edition of The Hound of the Baskervilles by Conan Doyle and simply states, This story owes its inception to my friend, Fletcher Robinson, who has helped me.